Good morning. Welcome to North American Martyrs Parish. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join in our entrance antiphon on page 6. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, <clears throat> Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is not to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by, your, by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. 
prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters, mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to test the new microphone. Is that okay? Maybe a little loud. When I was in college, there was this app, and it was on the phone, but It was based on the campus you were at. And it allowed people to post kind of random things. Does this give me feedback? There we go. That wasn't planned, I promise. But I look really important now with two microphones. But like I was saying, when I was in college, there's this app. And it allowed people to post random things on their college campuses anonymously. So as you can imagine, it really wasn't the most healthy of places on the internet. Well, one friend of mine uh, was talked into getting the app by her friends. 
and she spent just a few minutes kind of scrolling through it, and she said, this is a mess. This is just, this is just a mess. So before she deleted it, she posted one thing, three words, kind of four, I guess, if there's a conjunction in there, but she said, y'all need Jesus. And another layer to that app was this, that you could upvote things or you could downvote things. And if a, if a post had enough downvotes, it just disappeared. It went away. If it got upvoted enough, it stuck around and was put at the top of the feed. So it was the first thing that people saw. Now you might expect on, a, on an app like this, on a kind of social space like this, that something like Y'all Need Jesus would, get, would have gotten voted down long before anybody really saw it. But that's not what happened. She, her one post that she didn't even stick around to see how it would do was voted up so many times that it stuck around for days, if not weeks, in this app. Thankfully, the app was shut down and it's not used anymore. But that one story reminds me of the truth of the gospel, that the world, no matter what's going on, is always ready to hear those words. And sometimes even the people in the world want to hear those words, y'all need Jesus. And it was okay. It was okay and it was received in some way, maybe on a shallow way, but it was received nonetheless. Over the last year and a half, our parish has had members kneeling before Jesus, bowing before him in prayer, asking him, Lord, what do you want for our parish family? What do you want for all of the people that don our doors? And in answer to that, Jesus offered a kind of gift, a kind of lens through which to self-examine us and a way to walk with people. And that self-examine, that lens, is R-I-M, or RIM. We heard that relationship, uh, diving into our relationship, diving into that first and fundamental truth that we are children of God, roots us in an identity. Why? Because when we have a relationship with the living God, the author of life, He shows us who we are. He made us. He knows us best. So rooted in relationship, we stand strong and on an identity, which then drives us into a mission when God is ready for it, when he he pushes us in a gentle way, but in a way that he has made for us. We've also heard, just briefly, the dangers of reversing it. The dangers of, instead of living R-I-M, living M-I-R. Mission identity relationship, where when what I do becomes who I am, and then in that way I relate to people. But as we all know, as we all experience human nature, we're we're frail. And what I do can change from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And if what I do is shifting, and that's what my identity is based on, all of a sudden I'm on shifting sands. And it's easy to, to lose who I am. It's hard to find who is my, what is my deepest identity. And so from that danger, we shift back into our I am, relationship, identity, and mission. So what does it mean to have a mission from God? Well, I think as that story illustrates, there's a place in the world where God has chosen to need your voice, to need your presence, to somehow communicate, y'all need Jesus. Now, not in a way where you stand above everybody else and look down and say, look at you, you're a mess. You need Jesus. Look at me, I'm perfect. No, not like that. But rather as a brother and a sister, as one sharing human nature, as one who recognizes of themselves, I need Jesus. I turn to my brother and sister and give him the best gift I can. The reality of the need for our Savior and also how victorious he has been and will continue to be. So being on mission means there's a place in the world where your voice is needed, where your presence is needed. But let's go even a little more concrete. What does it look like when a heart lives R-I-M, when a heart is on mission, rooted in relationship, rooted in identity? That's where I'd ask you to pick up one of the little cards you would have seen in your pew when you came into church. Hopefully they were there on the ends. And everybody, feel free to take one. We printed quite a few of them. These are yours to keep. But being one who likes visuals, you might recognize the Holy Hearts 
of the Holy Family. You recognize in the middle the sacred heart of Jesus. And then to his left, there we go, the immaculate heart of Mary. And to their right, the most chaste heart of St. Joseph. Now I want to use each one as a way to kind of look at our I am in a concrete way. So we start with Jesus in the middle. The scriptures show us that Jesus was a heart in relationship with the Father. His life was predicated on his time spent with God, his heavenly Father. And we see that when he goes away to pray for a while. When he turns to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, let not my will but yours be done. How is that depicted in art? Well, you see this heart full of that deep red color, full of life. This is not a heart that's that's waning and, and sickly, but rather this is a heart full of life. But we also know that this heart, the way it's depicted now, is in his passion. So yes, there is a sense of in his passion, he is full of life. But fundamentally, we have here that red heart full of life, also on fire with divine love. And as we know, fire doesn't sit still. Fire always rises higher and purifies things as it goes. So Jesus' heart in relationship with the Father is a heart full of life and a heart on fire with divine love. As we move to identity, we move over to the Immaculate Heart of, of Mary. Now you'll notice, foundationally, her heart is the same color, receiving the fullness of life from her Heavenly Father, receiving the fullness of that divine love that same flame that inflames the heart of her son. Mary's heart is a heart in relationship, and it's so healthy that before the angel even arrives, she knows who she is. She is Mary. She is a beloved of God. She is his handmaiden. So that when that moment arrives, Mary, will you be the mother of God? She says, let it be done to me. She is who she is. We see her heart adorned with that crown of roses, pierced with the sword. We see that in this unique way, unrepeatable way, she is made to be the queen of heaven and earth. I like to think of Mary's heart, Mary's crown of roses, uh, in comparison or kind of next to the crown of thorns, how her son carried the thorns so that he could give her these roses. Mary is a heart in relationship rooted in an identity, and we know where her mission led. It led to the foot of the cross where she did not swoon. She did not fail. She did not pass, pass away. She was standing there strong as a mother, but foundationally as Mary, a beloved daughter of God. Finally today, I really want to shift over to St. Joseph, that most chaste heart of St. Joseph. And you can see again, foundationally, the same redness, the same fullness of life. But then, too, you see him wrapped in the the beautiful lilies, the symbol of purity, the symbol of chastity. And perhaps one of my favorite parts are the tools of his trade. Where are they? They're in the midst of that flame of divine love. The Heavenly Father did not ask him to set them aside when he sent him on mission as the foster father of the Son, but rather allowed them to stay, purifying them for God's will, for his plan. He teaches his son Jesus to become a carpenter, a, a, craft, a craftsman, a, somebody who works well with their hands. Joseph is, Joseph's heart is a heart on mission, related, rooted in relationship, solid in identity, yet wrapped in the virtues and the trades of his, the tools of his trade that God allowed him to keep but purified them along the way. Joseph's heart is living rim. Now for you and I, the, the Immaculate Heart and the Sacred Heart might seem really far. Why? Because Jesus is God. He, didn't, he never knew sin. We also have Mary's heart, who by a singular grace never knew sin. By the Immaculate Conception is a heart different, in a way different from ours. But here we have St. Joseph, a man just like you and I, yet a man who by the gift of God is given a holy heart for the sake of mission, for the sake of, of changing the world, really, through how he raised his family. So my question becomes for you, what will your holy heart look like? How has the Father planned to adorn and decorate your heart? We can recognize from the pattern that he wants to fill your heart with a deepness of life, a richness of life that we can get from nowhere else. 
that he wants to set it afire with his love, purifying whatever's in front. But he's not necessarily asking you to set aside the tools of your trade. The tools of your trade might be the sign of that place where your voice is needed to remind whoever's there, we need Jesus, we need him. Now maybe, the, again, that seems pretty far off. So here's another maybe thing to reflect on, a thing to, to start with and grow into this idea of your holy heart. Think of your patron saints, those enjoying heaven today but who are walking with us as companions. What does their heart look like? The middle name given to me at my baptism was Sebastian. So I like to think of his heart having a kind of crown instead of a thorns, a crown of arrows as he suffered that, that martyrdom even though survived and returned to defend the faith even more. Padre Pio is my confirmation saint, so I like to think of the Franciscan cord that they wear around their, their waist as wrapped around his heart, but with the same pierced side as Jesus's because of his having the stigmata. As a way to maybe grow more comfortable, as a way to foster your desire for your holy heart, think about what your patron saint's hearts look like and how they're walking with you in this growth and development of your holy heart practically with boots on the ground here today at North American Martyrs, maybe you're ready to go. Maybe you're ready to step into something and grow with our parish on a mission. So for the men, as you've already seen, our Knights of Columbus are here. And I can honestly say, I would not have made it through seminary practically if it had not been for the support of Knights of Columbus. Their, their fingerprints are everywhere, but they don't like to show that off. They are just in the background, supporting so many good initiatives in our faith. One, one story from Hastings, my time, my previous parish, the, the pregnancy center nearby needed a new ultrasound system. Within two weeks, the Knights of Columbus partnered with another fo uh, foundation in the, in the town, had a brand new system there, and within three hours of blessing that system, a mother was there and a life was saved. That's the real impact the Knights of Columbus can have. So men, if, if that's something on your heart, if that's a mission you feel called to enter into, don't worry, they won't send you on mission without fostering relationship and identity first. It's a good thing and we, we hope that more can join and be a part of it. We also have so many initiatives for the ladies of our parish. Martyrs, moms, oh, I get those always mixed up. Women of martyrs and martyrs, moms. We have PCCW, we have our grief group. We have so many things too that can, you can be a part of that maybe that's a place where your voice is needed too. So as you consider your mission, flowing from your identity, rooted in your relationship with God, know that we need you here. This home, this place needs you. One last image. Jesus so desires, I think, to ornament and adorn this church, this home, not with gold and silver and diamonds and pearls, but most fundamentally, the beauty of your holy heart. Could you imagine what this place would look like if every person's heart was living to the full of their relationship, their identity, and mission? I, I mean, it, I, I almost can't imagine how beautiful that would be, but I want to. So let's not wait. Let's dive in. Let's go on mission. As we heard in our gospel today, a man fell at Jesus' feet. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, follow me. Jesus looks at you today loves you, and says, follow me. So let's follow him on mission. And now let us profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of God, of all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in all of our needs, we offer these, our petitions, to our Heavenly Father. that the Catholic Church may free men and women from materialism and folly. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear. That wealthy nations may share their resources with poor nations and not exploit them. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That Christians who are rich may learn the wisdom of sharing their wealth with generous charity. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear that we may have wisdom to understand and interpret God's living and active word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the repose of the souls of the Lonic and Shide families for whom this mass is offered and for the needs of all here present for which we now pause to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. Lord Jesus, in our meditations, show us the image of our own hearts and help us to hear your call to our mission. And please grant these our petitions if they are for our salvation, who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God. The mystery, this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are holy your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Please join in our communion antiphon found on page 103 in the Missalette. The rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Short announcements. Our bishop's appeal for vocations continues as we try to support our 33 seminarians. Cards are located in the narthex. Also in the narthex are the auction items for our classrooms for our parish fundraiser gift. Uh, even if you can't make the event, you can still bid on them. And next, our parish already lives, lives out the call to mission in so many ways. So to help connect you to your call, uh, next week is our ministry fair. Each table will showcase different groups that live out the mission that you might connect with. And lastly, please join us after all our Sunday Masses for co Doni and, Doni and um, donuts and coffee given by the, our Knights of Columbus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. The hour of the tension is the witness and snares. Amen.